In the early 1980s, not everyone was in favor of creating a Charter of Rights. Some felt the Charter would give too much power to the courts. Others believed it was just Trudeau's obsession and that defining enforceable rights would be impossible. There were so many things that were happening. There was the whole field of multiculturalism, the huge influx of people who were from other countries and from people who had been refugees from other countries. There was a, a churning of a desire on the part of men and women to have their full rights. The Aboriginal people, they were concerned about theirs. And of course the provinces were having their conflicts as well, so something was needed to bring about something that would pull it all together. Roy McMurtry is Chief Justice of Ontario. In the early 1980s, he served as Attorney General for the province and witnessed the charter debate firsthand. It's a very complex issue because there were a number of premiers who, who believed in parliamentary supremacy and, and their belief was grounded in principles. It was a very principled opposition to a charter of rights, entrenched charter of rights, because they sincerely believed that parliaments and legislatures could better protect the rights of the individuals than the courts. I think it was a dream of Mr. Trudeau to create um, a just society where the rights of the majority could not be um, used to trample the rights of the minority. And I think the Charter served as the benchmark for um, enshrining in law the rights of the minority. And I think it was truly a reflection of his vision. It wasn't a question of uh, right versus wrong. It was just a question of how best can we protect the uh, respect the rights of individual Canadians. During a series of conferences in 1980 and 1981, Canada's leaders met and debated the Constitution and the Charter of Rights. At the time, much of Quebec wanted to separate from Canada. The province's leader, René Lévesque, resisted supporting the national agenda. Like Lévesque, most of the premiers were against Trudeau. They felt the voice of Canadians could be best heard at the provincial level. So there was a situation of a sense of alienation amongst provinces, and so that was a further complication of the country. And um, then, of course, there was the whole matter of civil rights and uh, the question of relationships of the handicapped, of, of um, the relationships of women and their rights. Uh. Well, there are quite a few uncomfortable moments <laughs> because uh, Pierre Trudeau, a great man that he was, he, he, did, uh, he, he did motivate very strong feelings either uh, for or, or against his, his positions. Trudeau had the mind, the intelligence, the determination uh, right from the start to drive to bring about a change, to entrench the chart of rights and freedoms in a constitution that was Canadian. I remember Jean Crutchen saying to me when we were talking about it before the last meeting about uh, persuading Mr. Trudeau to uh, be less argumentative, uh, uh, Jean said to me, he said, well, DeBoss, he said, he sure won a lot of arguments, uh, but then there was a pause, he said, but, you know, he sometimes loses the war. But Trudeau did know how to play his cards. Betting many of the premiers would be against a national referendum, Trudeau called Levesque's bluff. To me, the critical moment was when Mr. Trudeau was getting a little fed up with the whole process, said to me, well, uh, said to all of us, well, maybe we'll just, with that famous shrug of his, we'll... Uh, we will let the Canadian people decide. Trudeau's proposed national referendum would determine the future of the Charter and an amending formula for the Constitution. Quebec was in favour of this approach, but the rest of the provinces disagreed. The result was a late-night dinner meeting with Trudeau and the Premiers, a meeting without René Lévesque. During the, the long night that ensued, we, we reached an agreement but uh, I regret to this day that Quebec was excluded. Without Quebec's support, Prime Minister Trudeau and the remaining provincial premiers move forward to patriate the Constitution and give birth to Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I am pleased to inform you that we have solved this problem and that we have reached agreement not only on the fact that uh, we needed a Canadian constitution, but also on an amending formula. 
This means that after 114 years, Canada will become, in a technical and legal sense, an independent country once and for all. And he said it was so amazing, so refreshing, he told the caucus, to have a group of people, leaders of the country's organizations, cultural organizations coming, to thank him for his leadership and his initiative in trying to repatriate the Constitution, entrench and enshrine a charter of rights and freedoms. On April 17, 1982, the Queen attended and proclaimed the new Canadian Constitution on the steps of Parliament Hill uh, on that date. And as a result, the legal and political landscape of Canada changed quite dramatically. We now have a charter which defines the kind of country in which we wish to live and guarantees the basic rights and freedoms which each of us shall enjoy as a citizen of Canada. It's true that our will to live together has sometimes appeared to be in deep hibernation, but it is there nevertheless, alive and tenacious in the hearts of Canadians of every province and territory.